Hi, thank you to my subscribers and if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. So in this video, we are going to see how to integrate a simple client application with AWS Cognito using OpenID Connect protocol and then configure that application in AWS SSO so that users who logs into the AWS SSO dashboard can launch this application. So it involves multiple steps like configuring Cognito and then a client application, then configuring AWS single sign-on and then configuring that client application in AWS single sign-on. So please follow each step and if you miss any steps and if it doesn't work, you can come back and refer the video or if you have any issues or if you have any questions you can post your questions or issues in the comments section and i will be happy to reply so let's uh, move on to the configuration the first step is to configure aws cognito and then add the client application in the cognito user pool uh, so let's go ahead with that So you can go to the Cognito service, manage user pools and then create a new user pool. You can give any random name. I'm just going to give it as a OIDC AWS SSO test and then click step through settings. By default, you will see only email attribute as required. So for now, let's add maybe given name family name, name and uh, remaining things you can just leave it. Go to the next step. You can just leave these things as it is. And you can go to the next step. and finally create the pool. So the only thing we changed is we selected some additional attributes as required, but other than that, we didn't change anything else. So create this pool. So this user pool got created successfully. The next step that we have to do is uh, set a domain name for this pool. So you can use any random name. I'm going to just put OADC test one and check if it is available. Yeah, it is available. So you can even give OADC test two. Like it doesn't matter because we are just doing a proof of concept. So you can give any name. I'm, I will keep it as OADC test two and save the changes. So now the user pool is created. The domain name is configured. The next step is uh, we need to actually create a client application uh, which will use this cognito user pool for authentication so before going there i will uh, i just want to let you know that i will be using chrome browser for all the configuration related things and then i will be using mozilla for testing the integration so that in that way it will be easier for you guys to follow so let's go back to the Chrome window and the application that I'm going to use for testing is the standard JWT.io and many of you might be aware of the JWT.io application. It's uh, basically like a, just a simple web page where you can paste some JWT tokens. It will decode and give the details. So I'm just going to use this uh, page to create a mock client application but in reality you will be building some uh, real application web application using java.net or any other technology and you will be integrating those applications with Cognito so in order to configure that jwt.io in this Cognito uh, pool let's go to the app clients configuration click add add a app client 
and uh, let me just name it as JWT IO. You can leave all the other things as it is and then create this app client. And you need to go to the app client settings and then you will see that same JWT IO test and some other details. So as of now for the initial testing, we will select Cognito user pool as the user pool for this particular application. Later on, I will say like I will show you how to change this identity provider to a different one when we integrate the same application with AWS SSO. But as of now, let's keep it as Cognito user pool and the callback URL will be HTTPS slash colon slash slash JWT.io and select implicit grant and use email open ID profile scopes and click save changes. So the application got uh, created and right now we don't have any users. So let's create a test user uh, just for testing this entire flow. You can uncheck this mark phone number as verified, otherwise it won't allow you to create a user. So as of now, so we created the user. Let's go back to this app client settings and launch this hosted UI and see what happens. So let's use that same user credentials which I created. Since this is the very first time I'm trying to log in, it asks for uh, the password, new password. So I will just give some random name. So this worked. So I was able to log in to that JWT.io and the JWT.io actually decoded that ID token, JWT token. And if you can see the details here, it shows the name, family name, given name, all these things. So let's test it from Mozilla using the token endpoint of Cognito. So if you go to Google and search for Cognito token endpoint, So here you can see how to actually uh, basically form an authorized request. Basically, like we need to actually go to the authorized endpoint, not the token endpoint. So this one shows how to uh, build an authorization code grant flow URL using uh, Cognito. And in this case, we are using implicit flow and not the authorized code grant flow. So I'll be setting the response type as token instead of code. But let's see how to actually test it from Mozilla. So if you look at this URL, right, uh, slash OAuth to authorize, the actual domain for this URL comes from the Cognito domain name. So you can go here, copy this uh, domain name, go back to Mozilla. And uh, I will type in that. So let's copy this. OIDC test two dot slash, and then you can copy this part of the URL. And response type equal to token and client id equal to copied from here so this is the client id and redirect uri equal to the same thing that we configured here if you go here we actually here in app client settings which is jwt.io And 
state. So let's give the state. So you can just give some random values for now. It doesn't really matter. And uh, scope. Scope is uh, basically like uh, in this case, open ID plus profile plus email and uh, norms. So norms will be uh, again some random value one two three four. So just type enter. <coughs> uh, there is some parameter which is missing. Let's see what what that parameter is. So let me again go back to that URL. Let's see what parameter is missing. So it it's actually uh, it has nonce, it has a scope, it has a state, redirect URI, client ID. So if you go back here, uh, you can check uh, like if we have missed out any specific parameter. So we have the response type, which is, oh, okay, sorry. So I missed a equal to here and that is the problem. So now we got the login page and let's again type that same user. <coughs> yeah, so now I was able to log in uh, using Cognito and I got this JWT dot io page where you can see the jwt token the decoded jwt token which has the given name as test the cognito username is the test user one and then you have the family name as user one email as test user at example.com so this integration works fine we are good here so we are done with this cognito configuration the next step we have to do is configure aws sso so let's go back to the aws console and open the aws single sign on service so when you open the aws single sign on service for the very first time it will ask you to enable aws sso so let's go ahead and enable aws sso and uh, it will ask for the identity source so let's go to the settings and uh, we will keep the identity source as it is like the default one let's not make any changes so so the aws sso is now enabled it's created now we can go ahead and add applications add users so we, we can do uh, all these configurations so let's first go ahead and add Add a user. Again, I am going to name this as test AWS SSO user one and generate a one time password and give some uh, dummy email address. That's fine. We are not going to actually use it. So test AWS SSO user one. You can leave these things as it is. We don't need a group. Click next and add the user. And we have selected the uh, one time password. So let's actually copy this uh, instructions i don't know what is this instructions anyway let's see so let's first actually copy this user portal url and try to log into aws sso dashboard using this user name so if we go back to mozilla let's first clear all the cookies because we don't want any cookies to actually clash with this domain or the other domain so let's clear all the cookies i'm using this plugin 
called um, I think it's called edit cookie or something you can use Mozilla settings to clear the cookies or you can install a plugin whatever you are comfortable with so let's type that URL so we should get the login page anytime now yeah we got it so let's copy this username and let's copy this password so it will ask for a new password because this is the very first time we are trying to log in set new password so i was able to successfully log in to aws sso dashboard which is great but we don't have any applications right now which is inspected so let's go ahead and configure that cognito application in aws sso so let's sign out of this page and go back to this location and go to applications so now we have to go back and forth between AWS SSO and AWS Cognito. So I will open one more tab. Go to Cognito and go back to that user pool OIDC AWS SSO test. And now what we are going to do is we are going to add AWS SSO as a SAML identity provider in this AWS Cognito user pool. So you have to remember one thing that AWS SSO supports only SAML as of today. So that's why we are going to add it as a SAML identity provider. So here it asks for certain details. Let's see how to get these details from AWS SSO. So click add new application and then select custom SAML application. And let's name it as JWTIO Cognito App. And the SAML metadata file is here. Copy this URL. And now you paste that URL here in the Cognito Add Identity Provider. And let's name it as AWS SSO IDP. Same thing here. So we were able to actually create the uh, SAML identity provider and you can see the metadata document. So actually you can even open it here. You can even open this. Uh, for example, you can copy this URL. You can open it here and it will give you the XML file. So you can check it. You, you can open it in any XML editor and you can see the entire configuration. So here uh, we have this uh, AWS SSO IDP configured as a SAML provider in the Cognito. Now we have to configure certain URLs of that AWS Cognito here. So AWS SSO asks for the application SAML metadata file from Cognito, but we don't have any SAML metadata file from Cognito. So the only option is to manually configure it we will actually see how to do that so it asks for the application acs url and the application saml audience so go to cognito saml identity provider documentation and let's go to this documentation and see how to get it so if you go to this uh, documentation here you will see like uh, how to actually add a SAML identity provider in uh, Cognito. Uh, sorry, how to get that ACS URL that you need to configure in AWS SSO. So let's uh, actually search for ACS. So, so it's not here. No let me find out so if you go here and uh, let's 
let me check Cognito SAML ACS yeah so here you have the uh, URLs so the URL if you look at this URL it says uh, your domain URL which is basically the one which is configured here so this domain URL followed by slash SAML2 slash IDP response that will be the assertion consumer service URL for the Cognito user pool which access the SAML service provider so let's copy this and come back to this section add it as OIDC test2 dot that cognito domain and then slash saml2 slash idp response and the application saml audience is actually this format so you can get the user pool id from the cognito settings so go back to cognito go to general settings and copy this pool id and replace it here so the next thing that we have to do is add this application start url so this is the url which will actually initiate that single sign on flow between cognito and aws sso and this is where some trick needs to be done so let's go back to mozilla let's again uh, get that url which i created initially copy that url come back to here the screen and paste it here and click save changes so now this cognito app is configured in aws sso now we have to add some attributes that needs to be sent back to aws uh, sorry to cognito when a user launches that app from aws sso so let's add few attributes here again go back to aws documentation aws sso user attributes so you can see the list of attributes that are supported so i will copy this one and put it here and i will select it as unspecified and then i will add a email attribute and map it to this one unspecified then i will add a given name and map it to this one and i will add a last name and map it to this one save changes and go back to user pool cognito the cognito user pool and then come to this attribute mappings and now we need to configure all those attributes here so add a saml attribute select uh, what you say the username so the username let's map it to the email attribute that we configured here so the email that is sent from aws sso will be mapped to the username attribute in cognito and then let's uh, map email as well again to same email and uh, let's map given name to given name and let's map last name to the family name like whatever you gave here the exact attribute name should be given here so click save changes so there is some error okay so i need to add one more uh, which is name and let's check if that attribute is available here yeah it's available here so let me first add it here click save changes and then map name to name attribute so now the attribute mapping is done let's go back to this app client settings so if you remember we initially configured cognito user pool as the provider for that application 
because at that time we didn't have this AWS SSO IDP, we wanted to test the flow, so we used the local users which are Cognito. But now we want to switch this, so let's switch this to AWS SSO IDP and uncheck this one and click Save Changes. So we need to do actually one more thing. Uh, before actually uh, testing this uh, entire end-to-end -end flow, right? So if you go to Cognito Authorize Endpoint, there is one additional attribute here called Identity IDP Identifier. So let's copy this and add it to that request, the application start URL that we configured here. So if you go to this application configure URL, edit configuration, we need to actually add one more parameter to the end of this URL. Let's go to the, uh, let's add it here. So it will be IDP identifier and it will point to the value that we gave here, which is this one, the AWS SSO IDP. And I, I will tell you like what it really does. Uh, it, it actually automatically redirects the user to this AWS SSO IDP. So anyway, we will we will see like how it works. So now this configuration. Oh, there is some error. Oh, okay, there is a space. So let me remove this space. And I think there is a space here. Let me remove that as well. Just make sure there is no other space. Click Save Changes. Yeah, now we are done. Again, let's go back to Settings. And uh, copy this URL. And go to Mozilla again. So let's clear all the cookies again so that we don't have any other issues. And I will again start the flow let's see what happens here and if we face any issues let's fix it so i signed in now i should see an app no i don't see an app okay let's go back to the aws sso configuration and let's check the users so we have this one user and uh, this user Okay, don't have access to any application because we never added any users to this application. So let's go back to that application, click that application and go to assigned users and then select that user and assign that user. Let's try refreshing and see if it shows up. Otherwise, we might have to sign out and sign in. Oh, okay, that's great. So just by refreshing it showed. Let's try to launch and see what happens. Uh, actually, this is the main reason I added this particular parameter so that it doesn't show this login page. By default, it should have selected this IDP, but somehow it didn't work. Let's see how to fix it. But as of now, I will select this IDP. Great, so the login worked. So I was able to actually single sign on between AWS Cognito and AWS SSO. And you can see the provider name as AWS SSO IDP. And uh, then the, the username that I gave in AWS SSO, which is the AWS SSO user one. So you can see all the attributes related to that user that I created in AWS SSO. So the federation works. Let's just fix that one issue where when I launch that application, instead of directly going to AWS SSO IDP, it's, it actually shows this login page. So let me go back to this uh, application configuration and also check this authorization endpoint. Maybe I need to use this parameter instead of IDP identifier. So let's try this parameter instead of IDP identifier and see if it works. 
so if I go to the parameters list so let me replace this with identity provider and see if it if it works so let me sign out and sign in So the sign out and sign in both worked. Let's try to launch this application and see. Oh, even this is not working. So again, I will click continue with AWS SSO IDP, but let's see how to fix it. So if I go to this identity providers, so I have this uh, AWS SSO IDP let me check if the name is actually matching <coughs> or actually what we can do is copy this URL and see what is happening. Let me clear these cookies. Yeah, it is still showing. So maybe something is missing. Uh, let, let me do one thing. Let me actually move this parameter to the end and see what happens. that also didn't work so what is the other parameter here it says IDP identifier let me again check that one that also didn't work that's surprising ideally it should work but uh, I am not really sure what is happening let's again just make sure we are using the right name <coughs> and there is no other space or something Here it's just IDP identifier and let me actually give both the values and see what happens. So we have the IDP identifier as AWS SSO IDP and I will have identity provider as AWS SSO IDP. Still it doesn't work. Anyway, uh, okay, I think I got the issue. Okay, it should have been OAuth to authorize instead of login. That seems to be the issue. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and fix that uh, in AWS SSO. So somehow I copied, maybe I copied the wrong one. I'm not sure. Let's actually see what is the URL here. Yeah, this should have been OAuth to authorize and not slash login URL. E even though the login worked, it's actually a different URL. In this case, we should be using the OAuth to authorize and not the login URL. So let's try this one more time before we go there and log into AWS SSO. Yeah, this seems to work. So uh, let me again log into this AWS SSO dashboard and launch the same application. So these are some issues that you will also face when you're configuring these uh, 
applications so don't get uh, disheartened uh, you can always post your issues or questions in the comment section and i will respond back or you can again come back to this video and refer so if now if i sign in and launch the application it shouldn't show that page where it says continue to aws sso instead it should directly sign in to that client application which is jwt.io yep it worked so you can see this uh, user details like the same user that i created in aws sso and if you want to check the uh, browser trace i have this saml tracer installed here in this mozilla you can also install this saml tracer it's a very uh, useful plugin so when i launch this app actually what happens in the background is you can see it here okay in this case it already had a session so it didn't go to aws so let me do one thing let me actually clear all the cookies and again log, log into aws sso dashboard from the beginning let me clear all this data so now i'm logged into aws sso dashboard and let's see what happens here so i cleared everything let me launch this app so you just keep noticing what happens here so if you look at here a saml request came from aws cognito to aws sso and since i was already logged into the aws sso dashboard the Ad using my test aws sso user one credentials aws sso automatically responded back with an, a saml assertion response to cognito and you can see the user attributes here like uh, all the user attributes uh, for example the uh, it should actually show here yeah so the name test aws sso user one last name email given name and the subject is also the username which is test aws sso user one so you can see this uh, saml response the reason why aws sso sent the saml response without showing the login screen is because i am already logged into the aws sso dashboard using test aws sso user one now i will show you a different flow of what will happen if someone tries to access this client application directly without signing into aws sso so let's again clear this close this clear all the cookies so that uh, the user don't have the aws sso session go back to chrome copy this url and come here and see what happens so now if i try to directly access that client application now aws sso shows the login page because i didn't log into aws sso dashboard and launch this application instead i directly try to access that application so it is showing the aws sso login page so here you can come and see the saml request that came from cognito to aws sso now when i log in to aws sso dashboard it should post a saml response back to cognito and then single sign on that user to that application yeah so you can again see the saml response here and you can see the user id everything so this is how you do the end-to-end -end configuration between AWS Cognito, AWS SSO. And I will show one more thing before we close this video. So if you go to this user pools and come to this users and groups, you do a full refresh of this page because Cognito sometimes doesn't refresh properly. Now you will see a new user created here automatically. And that username has a prefix AWS SSO IDP which matches with this identity provider which I configured here and the username from AWS SSO. So if you go to AWS SSO users, you can see this test AWS SSO user one. And if I click this username, you will see 
all the values from the AWS user, AWS SSO user profile, like the name, given name, family name, email address. So if I go here and click this user, you can see username, first name, last name, first name is given name, last name is family name, and then the email address. So this is how you actually do the end-to-end -end configuration. It involves multiple steps. And as I said before, you can always post your comments, questions, feedback, and I am happy to answer. Thanks for watching this video. And again, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.